In section 1.5, we're going to define accuracy and precision, distinguish between exact and uncertain numbers, correctly represent uncertainty in quantities using significant figures, and apply proper rounding rules to compute quantities. So being absolutely certain of a value is actually a very rare thing. And the only way to actually do this is through counting. So uh, you can say that there's one egg, two eggs, three eggs, but second you start talking about how much mass say of eggs you have like I have or how much weight of eggs you know like I have three pounds of eggs or something like that you don't have exactly three pounds you may have 2.99 pounds and if you measured it even more carefully you might find you have 2.993 pounds of eggs so you can't absolutely be certain unless you're counting a discrete unit um, the result of counting measurement is an example of an exact number the numbers for defined quantities are also exact. For instance, one foot is exactly 12 inches because we said one foot is exactly 12 inches. And we can say that one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters just because we say that this is true. So we can define things to be uh, exact or we can count them. Other than that, all numbers have some level of uncertainty with them. So uncertainty is a common thing. Quantities derived from measurements other than counting are uncertain to varying extents. These numbers are not exact. There are always practical li limitations of the measurements proce uh, measurement processes that we use. A measured number must be reported in a way to indicate its uncertainty. In general, when recording a measurement, you are allowed to estimate one uncertain digit. So let's see what that means. So here, for instance, uh, we have a graduated cylinder. It has 20 here, it has 25 here, it has five markings in between. So each one of these is one uh, milliliter. So here we're going to have 20. This is 21. This top line here would be 22. We get to estimate between the two. So I could say maybe that's a little closer to 22, so I can say maybe it's like 21.7 or something like that. Um, so I get one estimate between the graduations, and that is the best that I can do using this instrument. Uh, on the previous slide, if one recorded the volume in the graduated cylinder to be 21.6, remember we estimated this last value, so you might estimate a 6, where I estimated a 7. Uh, 2 and 1 are certain digits, so it's not debatable that it is larger than 21 and less than 22. But 6 is the estimate. Someone else might perceive the volume to be 21.5 or 21.7 milliliters. All the digits in a me measurement, including the uncertain last digit, are called significant figures or significant digits. Frequently, we need to know the number of significant figures in a measurement reported by somebody else, and I would say pretty much always we need to know that. Um, so there are some cases where we're going to write numbers that are not significant, okay? Um, Non-zero digits are always, but there are some cases we're going to write numbers that aren't significant, but these ones are always going to be significant. Any non-zero digits, any captive zeros, so those are zeros that are in between two non-zero digits, any trailing zeros, so the zeros we write at the ends of numbers, um, when they are to the right of the decimal place and when in scientific notation. Um, these numbers are always not significant. Uh, leading zeros, so zeros at the beginning of a number, and trailing zeros when they're to the left of the decimal place. So we're going to look at some examples here. So here is our captive zero. It's got two non-zero digits on either side, so that is a significant digit. This is a trailing zero, and there's no decimal place, so it is to the left of the decimal place if we had written it. This is not a significant digit. Here, we have our leading zeros here, here, and here. Doesn't matter if they're to the left or to the, whoops. Doesn't matter if they're to the left or right of the decimal place. They are not going to be significant. 
Here we have our capped of zero, and again, just like when it was to the left of decimal place, it is significant. And now we have our trailing zero. And unlike this one, because it's on the left side of the decimal place, because this one's on the right side, it is a significant digit, okay? And one way I like to think about that is if I'm going to write out the number 3090, I have to have this zero here or else it's just not 3090, right? There's no way for me to write that uh, and not have that zero there, okay? So that means that it's not necessarily significant because it's just a way, it's just an artifact of the way that we write numbers. Over here though, I had to go out of my way to add another zero. I could have just stopped writing numbers right here, 0 0.00802. I went out of my way to write this, and I went out of my way to write that number because it was significant. So let's talk about how we work with sig figs. Uh, results calculated from measured numbers are at least as uncertain as a measurement itself. So we're indicating some something about the measurement technique that we used. How accurate was this when we're writing our significant our, our measured numbers with significant figures. When performing mathematical operations, a set of rules must be followed because we can't wind up with numbers that indicate a higher level of precision than we actually had when we made our measurement. And you can definitely do that, again, just as an artifact of the way that we do math. Numbers must be rounded to ensure that the result of a mathematical operation doesn't imply greater precision than it actually has. So let's go through our rules here. When we add or subtract numbers, we should round the result to the same number of decimal places as the number with the least number of decimal places, the least precise value in terms of addition and subtraction. Okay, so here we have three places past the decimal place. Here we have two past the decimal place. We only get to write our number two past the decimal place. Okay, we gotta go to the least one and make sure that we stick to that. So we only get the two here. Um, so we would have added these together. Uh, we would have gotten a seven as the last digit, but we round that up to get 0.78 grams. When we multiply or divide numbers, we should round the result to the same number of digits as the number of the least number of significant figures, the least precise value in terms of multiplication and division. Okay, so before we were only concerned about how many numbers we had past the decimal place, but when we're doing multiplication, we're gonna look at the whole number, uh, the, the number as a whole. So here we have three sig figs, here we have two sig figs. When we write the number out, we only get two sig figs. Okay, so this one's significant, the three is significant, but these two trailing zeros to the left of the decimal place are not significant. All right, so we had to round it to that number because we were limited to two sig figs from the 42 centimeters. Here we have three significant figures. Here we only have two. So we have to round our number to only have two significant figures, even though we had four here. We only get to use this two, okay? Remember that these leading zeros were not significant because leading zeros are never significant. If the digit to be dropped, the one immediately to the right of the digit is to be retained, uh, is less than five, we round down and leave the retained digit unchanged. If it is more than five, we round up and increase the retained digit by one. If the drop digit is five, we round up or down, whichever yields an even value for the retained digit. So this, there's a little caveat here. So we're used to, if it's less than five, we round down. If it's more than five, we round up. Here, they kind of make this distinction. Uh, usually, often in America, if it's a five, we just round up. But this does lead to some error over time. So uh, one, way to get around that is they say, well, if it's a five and it's right in the middle, we're going to round down or up depending so that we get an even value. Why do we want an even value? There's no real reason why we get an even value. It's just that in the long run, 
you're going to wind up rounding up just as much as you round down because half of the numbers are even and half of them are odd, right? So it's just to give it like a 50-50 round up and down on a 5. Uh, so it's not a bad way of going about doing it, um, and it is the standard in like baccalaureate programs and stuff internationally to do this. Uh, but, you know, it is a little different than what you may have been taught where in America we just round fives up. Uh, the following examples illustrate the application of this rule in rounding in a few different numbers to three significant digits. So if we're going to round this one to three significant digits, so we're looking to round to this number, and we're going to base it off of this number right here, which is a 7. So 7 is greater than 5, so we round up, and we get 2.67. We rounded this 6 up to a 7. Um, here we're going to round to three significant digits, so we go 18.3, so we're going to round this number, we're going to base it off of this one, this is a 3, which is less than 5, so we round down, we'll get 18.3. Here uh, we're going to have 6.87, we get that 5, right, so we're going to decide whether or not we're going to round up or we're going to round down. If we round down, we'll get 6.7, which is an odd number because it ends in 7, which is odd. Um, if we round it up, we'd get 6.88, which is an even number because 8 is even. So we do that and we round it up. Okay. Uh, here we got 92.85. Uh, if I round that up, it'd be 92.9, which would be odd. So I'm going to round that down to give 92.8. Uh, so accuracy versus precision. We're going to look at this in one of our labs as well. Um, a measurement is said to be precise if it yields very similar results when repeated in the same manner. And a measurement is considered accurate if it yields a result that is very close to the true or accepted value. So these are different things. And I think this graphic really helps to kind of indicate that they're different things. Okay. So if you imagine throwing a dart at a dartboard, okay, um, and the center being the actual true value that you can verify through some other means, okay, if you keep getting close to it and you repeatedly are able to get close to it, well, then you're being both precise and accurate, okay? Over here, you keep hitting the same spot, it's not close to the actual value, but you keep hitting the same spot, you're still being precise, okay? You're still repeatedly being able to hit the same spot. It's just not the one that's the most, a that you're looking for. It's not accurate. Where over here, you're far away from being accurate, and you're not able to repeat it. So if you can't repeat it, then you're not being precise either, okay? So accuracy is how close we can get to in, in actual true accepted value that you may or may not know. Uh, and precision is how well you can repeat and do the get the exact same result when you make the exact same measurement over and over again.